Welcome back to Big Picture Statistics and Computer Analysis. Today we want to talk about the chi-square Gunnison fit test, in which the expected distribution is not uniform, but nonetheless the expected distribution is given to us. Now here's an example. Let's just read it together. A retail trade association claims the tax preparation methods of adults are distributed as shown in the table below at left. A tax preparation company randomly selects 300 adults and asks them how they prepare their taxes. The results are shown in the table at right below at alpha equals 0 0.01 test the association's claim. Okay, now, they're asking us to test the association's claim, and if we look at this, the association is claiming that the tax preparation methods are given in this table. These are expected frequency distributions as percentages. This is done from a study with 300 people. So these are observed frequencies. Now, what we need to do, we have to set up a null and alternative hypothesis. For this test, the null will always be that the expected distribution of tax preparation methods is the one in the table with the expected frequency distribution. The alternative will be that the tax preparation methods methods differ from the expected distribution. And the alternative is our claim. Now, what we need to do, we have observed frequencies. We need to calculate the expected frequencies. The expected frequencies, we have to take these as decimals and we will multiply them by 300. Now, what happens when we do that? Well, let me put it this way. If you change this to a decimal, it becomes 0.24. You multiply it by 300, you will obtain 72. If you do it for the rest of these percentages, you will get these in other words, if you multiply their, these decim in decimal form by 300, you will obtain these values. Now, if we look at this problem further, we have five categories. And the degrees of freedom is k minus 1. So that leaves us with four degrees of freedom. So four degrees of freedom and a level of significance given by alpha at 0 0.01. We go to our table. So alpha equals 0 0.01, four degrees of freedom. It's a familiar value, 13.277. We've seen that before in a different problem. That is our critical value nonetheless. So we get this distribution, critical value of 13.277 here. The area to the right is the region in which we will reject the null hypothesis. Area to the left, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Our next step is to calculate the chi-square test statistic. And for that, we have to use this formula. Now, we can make the table we made last time. This column would be the column for O. This would be the column for E. We would basically add three more columns, one for the difference between these, one for the square of the difference, and one where we compute all of these individually without the summation symbol. And then we take the sum of that column, we would obtain the same value of 16.888. And that would be our chi-square test statistic. And this one lands in the shaded region. Since we are in the shaded region, we will reject the null hypothesis. 
And because the null hypothesis was our claim, there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim at the 1% level of significance. So that's how you would do this without any software. Now, let's take a look how this would look with the software. Welcome back. All right, so in SPSS, we would open, we would go to a new data file as such, and we would enter the data. The first piece of data that we would enter are those categories. So the categories, there were five of them. So we will number from one to five. The second piece of information we're going to enter, we're going to enter the observed frequencies. That was the data collected from the tax preparation methods that the people used from a study. So the observed frequencies are the ones that go here. Oh, I made a mistake, it looks like. <laughs> All right, good thing I caught it now. So these are the expected frequencies. Let me just go to variable view. All right, the categories were on the nominal level. Uh, let me label them. So one indicated that it was done by an accountant. Two indicated it was done by hand. Three indicated it was done by computer software. Hmm. Hold on a sec, I, I clicked in the wrong place. Three, I'm sorry, was computer software. I have to click that, not okay. So four was done by friend or family. Five indicates that it was done by a tax preparation service. So that's all of them. And this was tax preparation method. Maybe it might look awkward if it's too long. The observed frequencies is on the scale level of measure. And, and there it is. SPSS displays it perfectly. Now just like when we had a uniform expected frequency distribution, we need to weigh the cases.
way by cases, we'll put the observed frequency there. All right, SPSS is doing it for us. We'll minimize that. We'll go to analyze. And what we will do, we will go to non-parametric tests because the chi-square test is an example of a non-parametric test. We go to chi-square. And test variable will be tax preparation methods. Okay, now, where it says expected values, because our expected values are non-uniform, it will not be all categories equal. We need to check off the box for values. And we have to enter the values manually now. One of the nice things about SPSS, we can enter the expected values in absolute terms, or we can enter the relative frequencies. So the relative frequencies, those were just the decibels. We can enter the decibels. The ones that did it by accountant were 24%. The ones who did it by hand were 20% or 0.20. The ones who did it by computer software were 35% or 0.35. The ones who did it with by a friend or family had about 6%. And the ones that used the tax preparation service had about 15%. So we entered it in the table. Now we can take a look at options. We can get the descriptive statistics if we want to. But we'll let it go for this. Let's just get the chi-square analysis. There we go. It generated the observed frequencies, the expected frequencies, just from the relative frequencies and knowing that we had a total of 300. It got us residuals and it got us a chi-square statistic of 16.888 which is the value we had when we did it by hand. So with a critical value of 13.277, this would bring us in the shaded region. We would reject the null hypothesis. And we would conclude that there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim because the claim was the null hypothesis.